persons unit, a story that touched a nation's heart. I love you so much. Please come home. When Veronica Green's two daughters set out to find their missing mum, they never dreamt they'd find a brother. <laughs> there he is. And a warning for every parent. A 14-year-old chat room addict missing for three weeks. He was um, probably 35. What? Has JD fallen prey to the man she met on the net? Plus, the American engineer lost in the Blue Mountains. Occasionally we find uh, a log with some moss torn off it. He dialed triple O, but just how long will his phone battery last? Chances are that, yes, come tomorrow or come the day after, you might be looking for a body. It's another busy year for the officers of the Missing Persons Unit. We have uh, 26 outstanding this morning. Andy, you had a 14-year-old female reported missing to... New team member, police. senior constable yeah, Andy Drummond, is assigned the worrying case of 14-year-old runaway JD, who's been missing for three weeks. She actually hasn't been seen since the 28th of September. Uh, we also have a bushwalker that's gone missing at Wentworth Falls. Um, Mandy Gale is off to the Blue Mountains to help in the search for American bushwalker Kevin Moran, who's been lost for three days without food and water. We're just waiting a result from the rescue coordinator for that. Senior Constable Helen Nugent from the Victoria Police is in town on business. She's been working closely on the Veronica Green case for four like long years and is here to give the New South Wales team some good news about an unexpected yes, um, breakthrough. Veronica was, uh, went missing about approximately 30 years ago. Veronica's daughters have been looking for their mum. Instead, they found a brother they never knew existed. Their hope is that their brother will actually agree to meet them and that their long-lost mum, Veronica, will see the reunion on this program. 30 years is a long time to be missing your mum. Excellent. Have a good day. Thank you. But the current cases are today's priority, and none is more urgent than missing 14-year-old schoolgirl, JD. Ruth, hello. Hey, good morning, Ruth. My name's Andrew. I'm ringing from Missing Persons. How are you this morning? I'm good, thanks. And you? Andy calls her distraught mum, Retha, who last saw her daughter weeks ago. Have you heard anything from her at all? Nothing, no. OK, she hasn't been in contact with you at all? Um, about um, last Sunday, not this one, the previous Sunday, she right. sent me a sex message. That short message from JD is the only contact Rita has had with her daughter in three weeks. We could probably be over there by about uh, 10.30, 11 o'clock. OK, then. Bye-bye. Mum and Dad have been looking around streets for her. They've uh, tried to contact her friends and they've also tried to contact her on a mobile phone, but her mailbox is full, so at this stage, um, the whereabouts are unknown. Sergeant Helen Nugent from Victoria Police has been investigating the sad case of missing mum, Veronica Green, for years. The case of Veronica Green certainly has had some twists. I've uh, made inquiries almost in every state in Australia the majority of them being here in New South Wales. I've also gone up to Alice Springs and there's still more uh, information coming in. So here's this old album. Last year we met Veronica's daughters, Jackie and Penny, who've been waiting for their mum to return home for 30 years. The night before she left, I thought I'd ask her. <laughs> Mummy, would you, would you ever leave us? She said, no. Don't be so silly. And she never finished tucking me in, you know, and she walked out the door so fast. And the next day was, that was it, you know. Oh. It's been an agonising search, made even harder by a reported sighting as recently as last year. Everyone, like, I don't know, everyone else has a grandma. One day, baby. It was my fault. It's been really bad, and I just want you to know that I'm sorry. I'm sorry, and I love you so much. Please come up. 
But while searching for their mum, Helen Nugent discovered that Veronica had a secret. 46 years ago, she gave birth to a little boy whom she gave up for adoption. All right, I've got some news. There is a male child born at that time. Wow. Their baby brother was adopted out before the girls were even born. And their mum never told them. Oh, my God. <laughs> So the girls made a heartfelt plea on this program to their older brother. You do exist and you are out there and we are really looking forward to making contact with you and I hope that uh, you will find it in your heart to want to have contact with us and, uh, and our families. It would be really lovely to get to know our And as it turns out, 1,500 kilometres away, their brother Stephen was watching the program. It would be really fantastic if we could get to know you. But Penny and Jackie would have to wait a little longer before they saw their brother. And uh, hopefully we'll see you. It would take Stephen four more weeks to work up the courage to call his sisters. schoolgirl JD has now been missing for 21 days. As Andy makes his way across town to question her mum, Retha, he knows every minute is crucial. She's run away on prior occasions, but she's always come back when she's needed money. 14 year old girl, not much money. I'd definitely be a little bit worried about her well-being at the moment. JD is certainly no angel. She's run away from her home in Wollstonecraft in Sydney's north eight times in the last year. Hello, Hello Ruther. How are you going there? I'm good, and you? Oh, not too bad, thanks. My name's um, Andrew Drummond. You can call me Andy if you like. And this is um, Melissa. Melissa Hawkins. Okay. We're from the, um, has been ringing JD's friends oh, around the clock, just, um, but none of them have seen or heard from her. I found her on a few internet dating sites mm. and, um, you know, people don't realise what's happening. Um, the photos that they can take on their phones these days and just sing wherever they feel like. Mm. It's, it's really ridiculous. I'd like to know where this um, Sam uh, gentleman is yeah. at Auburn because I think if we can find or track him down, we'd definitely be on the um, right path to locating him, I think. Back in Kempsey, in the case of Veronica Green, Stephen is still stunned at the news he has a new family. He's our full brother. When I first got told about it, I didn't know what to believe. I got like a um, high-speed uh, you know, finding out your adoption process type thing, didn't I? For 46 years, Stephen, who's a community worker, has been living with his family in northern New South Wales, unaware he had two sisters living in Victoria. Bye, Dad. Or that he'd even been adopted. It's like something you turn up many different emotions at once and you just sort of left muted in a way by it all. Yeah, I don't know really how to feel about all of this. You know, I'm just not sure. It's not like I can go anyone and say, well, when this happened to you, how did you feel? Meanwhile, the search for 14-year-old runaway JD, Andy and Melissa organised to meet North Sydney detectives John Cosgrove and Guy Flaherty, who've been following up the new lead on JD's boyfriend, Sam. And it comes back, you know, this Sam Blake's an 18, 19 year old bloke with the WRX. I've sent off um, a um, compliance request off to the Commonwealth. Um, they're going to get back to us hopefully pretty shortly. If she's out at Auburn Way, at least we know she's out there, yeah. so I can send her well, quarry zoo. Yeah. yeah, we hope and, uh, that uh, we're going to be able to identify where she is, and certainly some of the indicators are that she is accessing her phone and things like that. But um, we, are, we are worried given her age. There's a couple of bump pool balls down there, I think. Andy and Melissa have taken their search to Auburn in Western Sydney, where she was last sighted with her friend Sam. Got some uh, concerns for a young girl that's um, run away. She's been missing for a while, a couple of weeks. Have you seen her at all around the area or in the shops? You might have come in to get some alcohol. Out of here, um, no. If you do see, so, can you just give um, Auburn Police Station a call? Hey, have you seen this girl at all? Did she get then, after hours of questioning, the breakthrough they've been hoping for. 
She turned up at um, George Street McDonald's with some unknown friends. Now, apparently, her friend Rachel said she was there and she was wearing someone else's dress. One would hope that there's some street vision there. So police raced to check the CCTV surveillance footage from McDonald's. After four agonising weeks of waiting for their newfound brother Stephen to call, Jackie makes one last plea to him. I just sat down one day, I thought, this is it, and I'm going to write a letter. And I just thought, even if he doesn't want to know about us, I wanted to just put my feelings down in writing and let him have it. So, look, the final paragraph um, is, anyway, Stephen, I believe that we can learn from our past, but our future is up to us. So we would dearly love to meet you and perhaps be part of your future, if you want, but this is up to you. Fond regards, your sisters, Jackie and Penny. The letter sums it all up. And um, it actually had a copy of the birth details and all that kind of thing that they threw in with it. No so there was, there was no disputing, no problems anywhere, you know. So the girls have convinced Stephen he is their brother. Now they just need him to call. Back in the case of missing 14-year-old JD... We've got these tapes today, if we could get you to have a look through from the council and see if we can find uh, JD on there. Happy with that? That'll be excellent. Her mum, Retha, has arrived at Harborside Police to view the CCTV tapes. She might be in company of other people that we can identify that may have assisted us. Uh, might get lucky enough to pick a motor vehicle. She might have been captured getting in a particular motor vehicle. We'll follow that line of inquiry up with registration. You know, if I know I knew what she was wearing, you know. A desperate mum scans every last frame of footage but can't see her daughter anywhere. As strong as she thinks she might be, um, you, you, you're not strong in the city and, you know, and um, obviously you're going to get in touch with all kinds of um, dodgy things and, um, and they'll find a way to convince her of whatever the case might be. And, um, you know, I mean, gosh. Back in Melbourne, in the case of missing mum Veronica Green, there's still no word from Stephen. So did you think it was pretty special that suddenly you've got an uncle? Yay! We have never seen him before. I'm excited. So the whole weekend, waiting, <laughs> waiting, every time the phone rang, oh, quick, oh, don't answer the phone. It, could, oh, it, might, it might be Uncle Stephen. Then, after 32 uh, days, really? came the call would you, would you that would change call? Jackie and Penny's lives forever. Hi, this is Jackie. Unfortunately, we can't take you home. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> well, that scared me. <laughs> well, I think I know who it is. <laughs> We're not gone. <gasps> yes, this is Jackie. I'm thinking, I know it's you. And he said, my name's Steve, and I've gone, ah! I'm waiting for you to ring all. <laughs> What's the tone of a voice? It sounded really. It's just like he he has known them for a long time. <laughs> it was just that free speech and. At least on the phone, and that sort of reminded me of me. I think mm -hmm. gives you a funny little weird burning feeling behind your ears. You know, sort of uncanny feeling. The missing persons unit. Sergeant Getty, Senior Council Gala, missing persons. Mandy Gale. receives an update from police rescue in the Blue Mountains. Yeah, who are searching for missing American Kevin Moran. What's happening? You made contact with Triple O yesterday. Yeah. From an area that is called Valley of the Waters. Kevin, who's an engineer, managed to get through to police using his mobile, but they still can't get a fix on his position. We believe that he went into the bush on Saturday afternoon. And then, uh, and of course, Saturday was fairly warm, and then Sunday's come over raining. At this stage, we can't conduct a helicopter search because of the weather. Yep. So we're conducting a land search uh, into um, into that area with uh, police rescue. Okay, then. Bye. Bye. I guess tourists come over and hear about the Blue Mountains and how beautiful they are, and off they wander and, you know, don't go prepared. My concern would be if that battery does run out. He apparently, we can't call him, he can only call out. So if that battery was to run out, and especially if he's moving around, would make it really difficult. It's now day 23 of the 
the search for missing 14-year-old JD, Andy and Melissa have now located her best friend, Rachel. She may know or possibly have some information about a house in Auburn. She's been to that address. Andy believes Rachel is still in contact with JD and needs to know where she last saw her. Is your mum home? Um, yeah, she's just downstairs. OK, can we come in? Yeah, sure. OK. It's a worry, isn't it? Like, people come out from other countries and they have all the tourist spots they want to go and visit. Meanwhile, in the case of missing American bushwalker Kevin Moran, Mandy and John are heading to the Blue Mountains to join the search. Always safer if you're two of you. Kevin went walking alone two days ago. He told no one and went totally unprepared. I just think. At Wentworth Falls, the search has been underway since daybreak. Track put is out. There's no actual defined track. Superintendent Mark McCullum has been monitoring Kevin's calls for help to Triple O. Generally speaking, mobile phones don't work in those areas because of the, um, the terrain. Um, so we're just lucky that this fellow, in fact, was uh, able to get out of the mobile phone. The signal from these mobile phones has been triangulated from a tower here and a tower here to be in this target area here. It's a huge area to search. There's um, boulders, um, there's trees. Uh, it was foggy and I lost it. So that was the sort of messages that were coming yeah. to us. Nothing, dis nothing distinctive as to where he was, which will give us a fix of exactly where he is. If Kevin's battery dies, and without his phone to provide a fix, another day out here could prove fatal. Chances are that, yes, come tomorrow, come the day after, we might be looking for a body. Meanwhile, back in Sydney, in the case of missing 14-year-old JD... I believe that Tony are good friends with um, JD. At uh, first, her best friend Rachel isn't saying much at all. We're trying to do, we're trying to establish, um, with your help, just to try and find out whereabouts she may be. But she soon realises the best thing she can do for her mate is to come clean. Have you met Sam at all or been around to his address? Uh, yeah, I've um, been to his house about a month ago or okay. two weeks ago. We're a little bit worried about her. We might just have a bit of a little bit of a drive around today and try and locate him. It's a good result. Okay. Andy and Melissa have now confirmed the connection between JD and Sam with a fresh sighting. In the case of missing bushwalker Kevin Moran, when Mandy arrives at the Blue Mountain search base, she receives some great news. We found him. We found him. Is he well? Is he yes, he's fine. Excellent. He's fine. He's a bit wet. He's a bit uh, tired and a bit scratched, but he's otherwise he's okay. Well done. Kevin's also hungry and dehydrated. He's told rescuers he walked about 40 kilometres, but he's really been wandering in circles for three days. It's taken our rescue guys about um, three and a half hours to get to there. How far is that from where he left to where he is? Yeah. It's only about two kilometres or not, okay. really, in real terms. The search team has found him, but alive, and I'm just devising a, a method of retrieval. But with bad weather closing in, it'll be tough getting Kevin out before nightfall. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Sydney's west, Rachel's trying to show police where Sam, JD's boyfriend, lives. The road here, when we go right, that'll take us into the Auburn area with the park side. Across <laughs> town, JD's mum, Retha, Homes and nearby shopping centres. Back in the police car, Rachel's directions aren't getting any better. Is there um, a highway? Because I remember we were on a highway. On a new perimeter road. But then, a breakthrough for Retha. Yesterday morning, yeah. at about 11 o'clock, there was a young girl sitting at the back in the outdoor dining area. Yep. When I approached her, she said, I'm, I'm fine, I'm just waiting for my husband. She had a pink top and blue long shorts. Um, she had a backpack, not this much, much blonder, but the face, um, very similar. Yeah. Well, she they, was sitting? And... She was sitting against either at the table with those three people or the table in front of her. What did he look like? I mean, he was um, probably 35. What? 
It's a positive sighting. But who's the 35-year-old man seen with the 40? Is it the same man she met on the net? JD, if you see this, um, I really miss you a lot. You know we all love you. Please come home. Please let the police know where you are. We want, need to know that you're safe at least. Uh, we want to help you whatever difficulties you have. Please come home. Love you. Up in the Blue Mountains, Paul Eyre has arrived to rescue Kevin Moran. The heavy cloud colour is making it hard to spot him and the rescue party who've gone in on foot. Gonna, the ground party are going to let off a flare just so Polair know exactly where they are. If Polair can't see the flare, they'll have to pull out, leaving Kevin and his rescuers a five-hour walk in the dark, or maybe another freezing night in the bush. Yeah, We'll just do a quick assessment of it and just see what we think here. Um, and we'll get back to you, but we definitely do have three persons located as a group together. And we'll just do an assessment of the recovery of all uh, three persons. As Paul Air hovers below the clouds, and with the weather closing in, the window for recovery is getting shorter by the minute. It was my fault. It was my fault. Back in the case of missing mum, Veronica really Green... Bad, and I just want you to know that I'm sorry. Stephen finally decides sorry. it's time to and put aside his fear. I love you so much. Please come and on. ...organises a meeting with his sisters. Hello. How you going, Jackie? Uh, are you excited? It's going to be good fun, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't think there's going to be any sleep in our house tonight. <laughs> I feel like I know you really well. I, I, I was saying something like that a little bit earlier. Oh, even though we haven't met, I've got a bit of a bond with you just over the phone. That it's come to this and that we're about to meet him is absolutely um, the best possible, you know, ending yeah. Yeah. result. The best <clears throat> possible result. Jackie and Penny still haven't found their mum, but their reunion with their brother is only hours away. Up in the Blue Mountains, after three days in freezing conditions, Kevin Moran is finally on board Polly. Now there's another drama unfold. Just orientating, I suppose, just a bit of the weather, finding it where the actual oval is. The clouds are so low, the pilot can't see the landing site. He's virtually flying blind. We've just got to guide him in by watching where they are and which way they're travelling, all sort of stuff. Just the cloud about. We do have time to muck around, so we're just going to go straight out to the golf course and uh, try and pick somewhere there. As soon as we'll just drive away these two, so we can get back into uh, recovery on the two. Rescue 85, we're about to get the golf course instead of time. It's a frustrating moment as police race to the golf course. This rescue is far from over. Back in Melbourne, Many thousands of in the ongoing case of missing mum Veronica Green, Himalaya. it's the night Himalaya. before Stephen's arrival. Mountains For the first time, he's about tree. to meet his sisters, Anna. Jackie, Penny, Anna. and their families. I thought the Yeti seemed quite friendly. Jackie oh, still wow. remembers her mum walking out 30 years ago and realises the pain it must have caused her. I think there's no doubt she loves this. We know things like that she cried all day at work. So, you know, we've been told that. And, mm -hmm. and all our family and her family tell us that she adored us, give anything to see her. Okay. We just got to, you know, hope that she sees us together and, and wants to come home and be part of that. You have sweet dreams. finally lands carrying rescued American bushwalker Kevin Moran. You must be Kevin. Yes. Nice to meet you, Mandy. Nice to meet you. Who's John? How are you going? Nice Sergeant Wheeler, nice to meet you. Hey. You look great, considering. 
Kevin might look all right, but he's shivering under his borrowed jacket. And there's the possibility that he's in shock and suffering hypothermia. We'll just do a quick check over this to make sure you're all right before we do it. He made a platform for the night and um, he was a bit cold and we cooked him up a feed and... Um, oh, are you good? ...and uh, got him... Got him yeah. This is uh, this morning you cooked him up? Yeah, yeah. That's great. We got to him about lunchtime, so... So he, he obviously just intended to go for the day? Day trip, yeah. A one-day oh. trip that turned oh. into a three-day night trip. Didn't that work? Won't be doing that again. It's clear to everyone how incredibly lucky Kevin has been to survive. Did you have any food with you? I had one muesli bar. Another, another 12 or 24 hours might have been a different story. I'm amazed at how well he's come through it all. Um, apart from a few scratches on his hands, he's fine. Um, I worry for him, though, maybe this afternoon because he's got no family here, his family are overseas. If he was to sort of sit around, that's when it might all hit him. So we've given him the number of a support service that we use and um, hopefully he'll be in touch with that and he can share his experience with somebody. But, yeah, what he's been through, amazing. Amazing. I couldn't do it. I wouldn't come out that good, I don't think. It's... Um, Case closed. Mm. And you feel it, Pen? Down in Melbourne, a new chapter is about to begin in Jackie and Penny's search for their mum, Veronica. Landed. It's landed. It's a hurry. We better hurry. On board this plane is some pretty important cargo. The brother they have never met. I just feel emotional. I don't know why. I was really excited, really excited. Now suddenly I'm just feeling really emotional. It's a life-changing moment that Jackie and Penny never imagined. There he is. That's him, definitely. <laughs> Next week... It's a new beginning. The reunion Veronica Green's daughters have been waiting for. My natural father showed up today. He told me she was beautiful. But will their meeting bring Veronica out of hiding? Oh, it'd be lovely if Veronica came back now and just walked through that door. We'd give anything for that. Also, will JD's mum ever hear from her daughter again? I'm very scared that she might put herself in danger. If police find friend Sam, will they also find JD? And maybe if we find him, we can find the girl. Grandfather James McGrath was last seen walking his dog. Three days later, he's still lost in this dense scrub. This is that thick that if you stepped over the edge, you wouldn't see him. You could walk straight past him, wouldn't even know he was there. And for his desperate family, it's a living hell. I'd never want anyone to go through this, never. It's awful not knowing.